thanks everyone for joining. Today we're going to talk about writing and updating the investigator's brochure. The IB is one of the most complex documents that we write in regulatory writing. So there are a lot of pieces that get put together from a lot of different areas. We're going to talk today about who will actually contribute to the investigator brochure, timing of construction of the IB. It varies at different times depending on where you are in phase of development. The, the requirements per the ICH E6 guidance how to implement them in your investigator brochure. We'll talk a little bit about researching literature for the background section. We also discuss a target product profile which goes hand in hand with your IB or your draft package insert. They're used kind of interchangeably. How you want to make your document so that a physician will read it. There's sort of a summary piece that's involved that's written specifically for physicians. And also determine when it should be updated, by whom, and what documents the update affects. We're going to start with just a little basic information that has to do not just with the IB, but pretty much any regulatory document, but it's important to get sort of these basics out of the way. So we're going to do that really quickly, and then we'll get more into the meat of things. So one of the things we need to talk about is goals when writing not just the IB, but any regulatory document. All of, reg of the regulatory documents should be concise, very simple, easy to read documents, objective, and balanced, and there should be no promotional or marketing materials involved. Now, it's, this is often very difficult with an investigator brochure when we talk about simple because there's a lot of really detailed technical information that goes into the IB. So it's very important to be able to write effectively to communicate your message, especially when the information may seem a little difficult for some of the readers. Your investigator brochure should really represent your best work because it's going out to the sites and the investigators are using this as a tool until your package insert or label is completed. Once you get to marketing, the IB is not as critical, but until then it sort of serves as your package insert. So it should enable any potential investigator for a clinical study to fully understand your drug or biologic, whatever compound you're developing, and allow them to make an unbiased assessment in order to determine whether or not they're comfortable participating in your clinical study and enrolling patients. Now your audience, for pretty much any document, it's going to be similar. You have a lot of internal reviewers that look at this document, a lot of stakeholders that are involved that, that supply information to you as well. There are investigators and study personnel that are required to read the document and understand what is going on with it and how it affects people that might be enrolled in their studies. There are also key opinion leaders that may or may not be involved in, in some of your clinical trials. IRBs always review it, and there's a very varied level of understanding of medicine and technical scientific things on IRBs, and that's for a reason. So you have to be able to communicate certain things to, to these members that you wouldn't necessarily worry about if you're thinking just about a physician using this. And of course, the regulatory agencies. These documents get submitted to the regulatory agencies as well. Every person comes to the table when they read these documents with their own unique perspective. Some could be lay people, not scientists or, or physicians at all. So what you want to do is have them all have the same takeaway. You want to make sure that anybody who reads the document has the same understanding and can come to the, back to the table with the same knowledge. So with that being said, let's talk about the different sort of types of people in your audience. Okay? So you're going to have your regulators. So what you need to do and your goal for the IB with regulators is you want to justify and communicate a good perspective of the disease that's under study, the standards of care, what else is happening in this therapeutic area or in this particular indication that is either consistent or inconsistent with the product that you're developing, other drugs in the same class. Why does your starting dose make sense? You know, you have to justify how you got there and why it can and should be used in humans. So if there's a known safety profile, that should be communicated. If there's not a known safety profile in humans, then you extrapolate from the non-clinical data. And you have to be very clear about how human subjects will be monitored depending on issues that are found during any kind of investigation with the product. So this is the information that the, re the regulators want, want to know. Now the investigators and site personnel are more patient focused, right? They, they really want to know how this is affecting their patients. So the relevant safety information must be adequately communicated. There should be a good risk-benefit analysis to help them to make a determination whether this is for them or not. They need to know how to administer the drug, what types of storage conditions, how stable is it, you know, are there special things that are going on that they need to know about, 
and what your rationale for using it, your drug in clinical studies is. What will they gain from participating in research? The IRB is primarily concerned with patient safety. That's really all they that's really all they want to know about. Of course, they want to know all the other pieces, but their primary function is to protect human subjects. So they're going to especially look at safety and the risk benefit analysis. 